Welcome to the Boneyard with Steve Roberts, and as always, I am your good friend and host, Steve Roberts, and coming to you in the wee hours of Friday morning. Uh, by the time many of you hear this, I will be on my way to Austin, Texas. We're going to swing through New Iberia, Louisiana, and to see Mississippi State commitment Davion Jackson and Westgate uh, take on Turlings Catholic. Should be some dudes in that game, too. Both of those teams have... Uh, some Division One players. Been a while since I've covered a game in Louisiana. Looking forward to it. Uh, had traded some messages with Coach Antoine earlier this week. All of our arrangements have been made. And then we will uh, finish up the game and we'll push on over into Texas and uh, get somewhere close to Austin and kind of settle in for the night. Get up and go cover a ball game as Mississippi State takes on the number one ranked team in the country, the Texas Longhorns. <clears throat> so <clears throat> it's busy. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to hustle back and uh, try to be back in time to cover Mississippi State's soccer game against LSU. Uh, LSU had a 3-1 win tonight. Bulldogs were off due to some weather there in the Carolinas, and uh, it looked a lot like a baseball field not too far from here. Uh, But nevertheless, I digress. Arkansas picked up a big win tonight, too, so they have sole possession of uh, first place in the Southeastern Conference. Bulldogs can pull even. Uh, They will make up that South Carolina game a little bit later. And so I shared with you guys earlier this week that Allie Perry now is a uh, NIL ambassador for True Rest of Starkville. Uh, I want to offer you guys a little bit of an incentive, too. You know, we are committed to our student athletes. We are committed to making Starkville a better place. Uh, Jeans Page has been very involved with NIL uh, since its inception, for the most part. Uh, We've raised a lot of money uh, to help Charlie Winfield and the Bulldog Initiative. We are partners with Charlie and B.I. And uh, so one of the things that well, I've talked to the bride about this today. So we're going to offer a special. We're going to offer a special that kind of allows you to kind of get involved and get some benefit from it as well. You know, because we want to uh, do some NIL deals with other student athletes. And we kind of need your help to do that. So here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> we're going to run a special for Boneyard listeners. Okay. If you want to come float for the very first time, and this is only going to be good Monday through Thursday, and first-time floaters only, uh, a float typically costs $89. Now, for your first float, we let you come for $65. But if you are a first-time floater and a Boneyard listener, and you do have to, when you call to schedule, you need to mention you heard about it on the Boneyard. And then when you get there, there's going to be like an intake form you fill out, and again, you know, pick the Boneyard. Right? This is how you heard about True Rest is through the Boneyard. And if it's your first time to float and you come Monday through Thursday, not the weekend, Monday through Thursday, we'll let you float for $45. Yes, yeah, so that's $20 off the first float price and half off the regular price. Monday through Thursday, $45 floats, first time floaters, Boneyard listeners only. And so if you've been thinking about that, it's like, you know, Steve, hey, you know, I'd like to try it. I don't know how much it costs. I don't want to make that kind of investment. So here we go. $45, first-time floaters, Monday through Thursday. You must mention the Boneyard when you call to schedule. So, Steve, how do I schedule? 662-268-7601. And you need to call in to schedule to get the special pricing, right? It's a pretty cool deal, right? It's it's kind of our NIL special. We're, we're running this, to, again, we want to sponsor more Mississippi State student-athletes. And so uh, we're going to run that special. Plus, it's a great benefit for you, right? It's a, it's a chance for you to come in and relieve some stress. Maybe you got some chronic pain. Maybe this can help you. We've got a lot of people that uh, are regular floaters that uh, have found that this gives them greater relief than anything else. Maybe you could be one of those folks too, right? Uh, and, and you say, but Steve, you're running this midweek, it's tough for me to get there midweek. Hey, I understand that. It's true. I don't know if you know this. We're open at 10 o'clock. Now, the, fin- the final float of the day starts at 830. And by being a first-time floater, you got to get there about 30 minutes early because it's the intake form you fill out. It's a short video. You know, We kind of give you the tour and kind of give you some idea of what to expect. So if you get off work at 5 o'clock and you say, you know what? Hey, Steve, I'd love to come float. Well, you can. So kind of plan ahead. And maybe you've got some friends that uh, would benefit that aren't Boneyard listeners, well, you know, we're not going to go make you take a lie detector test. 
So if they mentioned they heard about it on the barnyard, we'll offer the same deal to them. So first time floaters, Monday through Thursday. And again, you must call to schedule to get the discounted pricing. 662-268-7601. My lovely wife will answer the phone. You can deal directly with her. And uh, we'll get you scheduled, you know. And uh, again, maybe you've got a friend that uh, is in some pain, you know, or perhaps suffering with anxiety. We have a lot of our clients that have sciatica. A lot of our friends have ADHD or anxiety issues, and they found this gives them some measure of relief. So uh, True Rest of Starkville, a proud partner of the Bulldog Initiative, a proud partner of Mississippi State. So uh, come be a part of that. Again, 662-268-7601. All right, let's thank our friends at Bulldog Burger Company, longtime sponsors of this show. And I love them too, right? I love them. I think a great day is to go float and then go have a great Bulldog Burger burger. I've told you guys recently I've been on a smokehouse kick. I'm still on it. I kind of ride the wave until like something else kind of interests my taste buds. That's the thing about Bulldog Burger Company. The menu is so incredibly diverse. I, I had somebody just the other day that came to float and they mentioned that it's like you can get whatever you want at Bulldog Burger Company no matter what you're craving they've got something to kind of scratch that itch stop by Bulldog Burger Company next time you're in town or on the way to town three great locations to serve you University Drive in Stark Vegas Gloucester Street there in Tupelo Lake Harbor Drive in the Ridge and Flowood area I know you kind of get spoiled by coming to the one in Starkville the same quality of service the same quality of dining exist at the other locations get the spring rolls as your appetizer there is no geographical limitation on that it'll make you and everybody around you better looking and get that chocolate shake to go find your new favorites right and maybe you're not feeling a burger maybe the kids are so you know what steve i don't know what i eat that heavy right i love that blt salad i do it is the best salad i think i've ever eaten I don't get the red onions on it. You know my policy about that. But uh, I do get the grilled chicken. You may prefer the fried. Maybe you're from farther south than I am. I mean, I'm from south Mississippi, the Highway 98 corridor. Maybe, you know, a lot of folks down there, if it didn't fry, it didn't good. Uh, so I, there's no judgment for me. You get it how you want it. I get mine, I douse it with ranch dressing. That's, that's just kind of how it is. It's a prerequisite being from the 601 that ranch dressing goes on everything. It's true. Bulldog Burger Company, the place where people go to meet, M-E-A-T. All right, let's take some time to look at our weekend here ahead of us. Uh, it's kind of a limited schedule because, hey, you know, it's a conference play, right? And we got a few few teams that are off this week, open dates for them. Our first game of the day is 11 a.m. It's going to be an ABC broadcast. You know, it's so interesting now that ABC is a, a broadcast partner. You got... Kentucky 2-2, two and 0-2 two, oh and two in the Southeastern Conference. About what we expected. Uh, traveling Oxford to take on Ole Miss 4-0, and, oh, and Ole Miss exactly where we expected them to be. Ole Miss is a good team. As much as we don't like it, you got to give credit where credit's due. You know, they're playing well, and granted, they, they haven't really played anybody. Let's be fair about that too, Rebels. Don't get too full of yourself. And I don't know that you could say they would have played anybody this week. I I think Kentucky, too, is one of those sneaky teams, though, that I don't know they've got the offense to pull off an upset. I won't be surprised, though, if they make this kind of a weird game. You know, Stoops is a really good defensive-minded coach. You know, it's just like that game against Georgia. I mean, you look up and think, hey, Georgia should wax these guys. I mean, let's be honest about it. If you lined up a Georgia roster and the Kentucky roster and started picking players, more times than not, as you're picking your team, you're going to pick the kids from Georgia, even if you don't know where they're from, right? The talent differential favor Georgia, but Kentucky makes it a weird game. I think this is going to be one of those weird games, but I think in the end, Ole Miss wins and covers, but I think it could be one of those, you know, you kind of look up and like, hey, do I need to turn over and watch this, you know? But uh, yeah, Ole Miss, Jackson Dart playing exceptionally well for Ole Miss. 1,554 yards through the air. In the vertical passing game with Ole Miss, the threat always exists, right? You start creeping those safeties up to kind of defend that, that run game, and Jackson Dart's a part of that too. And Henry Parrish done a great job for Ole Miss, 427 yards rushing. Trey Harris still doing a great job, 628 yards. But you get out there and try to man up those wide receivers and bring those safeties in the box and don't have any help over the top, they will make you pay. Simple as that. Now, we'll see what happens to get a little bit deeper in the schedule. But uh, they'll win this week. But, again, I think it could be a weird game for maybe, you know, two, two-and-a-half quarters maybe. I think in the end, Ole Miss's athleticism 
will allow them to, to, to win and pull away, maybe not as comfortably as they would like. And that's the thing, too. If you're, if you're Lane Kiffin, you kind of like the opportunity to get a test without losing the game. It's a coachable moment. All right, one of our afternoon matinees, Arkansas at A&M. I will DVR this game because uh, I like it. For some reason, this is one of those uh, rivalries, if we want to call it as much, that always tends to interest me. Like, I love Georgia-Auburn. I love Arkansas at A&M because so many, so many weird things seem to happen in this game. They play the game in Jerry World, so it's always on a neutral side. They pack it out, and their ticket prices are ridiculous. But something crazy always seems to happen in this game. I don't know what it is. I picked A&M to win this game. I won't be surprised either way. You know, Texas A&M is kind of hanging in there, ranked number 24. And, and, I, and the Aggies aren't for real. I'm not sure how real the, the, the Razorbacks are either. But uh, offensively, you know, Arkansas has shown some explosiveness. And, of course, A&M's had some quarterback issues. It seems like it's just kind of – it's not a Jimbo thing. Maybe it's an A&M thing. You know, since Johnny Manziel has left, you know, they've had quarterback issues. Of course, Kellen Mond had that one big year in 2020, a year they probably should have made the playoff and didn't. But it's been a kind of quarterback carousel ever since. Again, I like A&M to win the game, but I don't have a lot of confidence in that pick. Bobby Petrino calling the plays for the Razorbacks. You just, you just never know. But uh, I, I tell you this, I love that Arkansas running game. I think they're doing a great job. And, uh, again, Sam Pittman's always kind of been an offensive line guru. You know, so you expect them to be able to run the football. They didn't so much last year. They were banged up, had some injuries. Uh, they kind of got it worked out this year. So I expect an entertaining game. And, and that's how we are, right? It's like how many times do we say it when our conference partners begin to kind of play these games, it's like when we don't have a rooting interest, we just want to see a good game. That's what I expect here. I expect a good game. The same time over on ABC, the Arkansas A&M games on ESPN, Oklahoma at Auburn. A lot of uh, discussion, you know, about Auburn this week. You know, some comments that Hugh Freeze made in post game didn't sit well with some people. You know, and here's the thing that I'll say. You know, far be it from me to defend Hugh Freeze, okay? While he maybe shouldn't have said it publicly, he didn't say anything that wasn't untrue, right? That, that's the thing, too. We, we tend to want to judge people, you know, based on what we think they should do from a class standpoint, right? Well, it wasn't very classy. I mean, Mike Leach was a guy, too, that, uh, you know, he didn't always maybe throw um, individuals under the bus, but he would talk about coaches a lot too. He would come out and say, "Hey, he said we got to coach him better. We got to coach him better." And there were sometimes he'd get frustrated because you know you got these guys sitting under a shade tree with their little fish sandwiches and little fat girlfriends. You know that stuff was humorous. But when when is the truth become so offensive, right? I mean, we want to judge these coaches for how they act in press conferences, and the reality of it is nothing said in a press conference changes anything. It doesn't. I mean, I got to cover these things all the time, you know, and I'm trying to get information, but it's not going to change the outcome of a game. It's not going to change a culture and locker room. And some people are like, hey, you just kind of throwing the, throw in the quarterback under the bus. And let me say it again for the record. For you Ole Miss people that defended Hugh Freeze at every turn, he could do no wrong when he was your coach. You have to sit this thing out. You do. You got to sit it out. Because, quite frankly, we don't want to hear it. You know, it's, it's so interesting – do you want to jump on the, hey, you guys are right bandwagon? There's no room for you. There's not. We're not interested at all in being aligned in that, that respect. Just not, We're not going to do it. You know. And so I see the Ole Miss media people come out being critical of Hugh Freeze. It's so incredibly hypocritical. It is. Now, back to our ball game. I like Oklahoma to win the ball game because I just think the Auburn quarterback situation is so incredibly unsettled. You never know from week to week who's going to play, who's going to play well. Do we need to play two quarterbacks? What about three? Do we just put 11 quarterbacks out there? I don't know. But, uh, you know, the things on the planes are not good. Not good. They're not pitiful, but they're not good. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if you've, if you've looked ahead here. Let's do it together, shall we? Let's do it together. Because I know how it is. Like, when, when we're winning, like, you're just a fan of college football all the way around, right? You're just so incredibly in tune with what's happened around the league. When we're struggling, it's kind of like, yeah, you know, whatever. Maybe I'll go. Uh, maybe I'll go dove hunting or something, right? Uh, and for those of you that didn't know, it is an orange out against Oklahoma, 
according to the Auburn website. But uh, two and two overall, they had a big one over Alabama A&M, and uh, they lose the game against Cal, and that was probably a harbinger of things to come. That's not a great Cal team. That's a team that Auburn beat last year out in Berkeley. And they lose that game, and, and they, again, they can't score. And then they beat up New Mexico. You know, New Mexico also lost to an FCS team earlier this year. They get them 45-19, and then last week you lose 24-14. So, you know, against Power 5 competition, you're averaging 14 points a game. You're not going to win many games in the Southeastern Conference scoring 14 points a game, we know from experience, last year. But after this, uh, after this week against Oklahoma, they got to go to Georgia. Right? I just talked about how much I love to watch that game. It's, again, something weird always happens in that one, too. You got to go to Georgia. You know, we're off that weekend. And probably a good date for us to be open. And then Auburn gets a, an open date themselves. And then they got to travel to Missouri. The way that Missouri has played offense, how prolific they have been, that's not a game that I think Auburn can feel good about. And then you got to go to Kentucky. That's going to be a weird game. And, and the truth of the matter is, I don't know that many people will watch it outside of uh, Auburn and Kentucky fans. But it's Lexington is a difficult place to play. Auburn, not necessarily a great road team in recent years. And again, Mark Stoops knows a way to kind of make that game his own. You got to beat him his own game. And then you go to Vanderbilt. You say that, excuse me, you host Vanderbilt. You say that should be a dub. And of course, I don't know what to expect from the uh, Clark Lee experiment. And then two weeks later, you get Louisiana Monroe, and uh, then it's Texas A&M at Auburn, and then you got to go to Alabama. So if we just start you know, looking at this, what, what games on the remaining schedule do you look like and say, hey, that's a pretty certain win. Let's put Vanderbilt in that. Let's put Louisiana Monroe in that. Outside of everything else, it's a toss-up or a game that Auburn's expected to lose. You know, what happens if Auburn goes 5-7? and seven? I don't think that's going to happen, but what if it does? What if they go 6-6? Six and six? And then all these Auburn fans, too, that have been kind of waiting for the Alabama bubble to burst. You know, what if Alabama makes a playoff and, and takes the Iron Bowl trophy with them? You know, it, it could get awfully chilly shall we say, uh, on the Plains, for sure. Of course, Mississippi State's in Texas. I told you guys, uh, you know, I expect Texas to win this game. It may surprise you, though. I did pick State to cover. I mean, to spread this thing is 38 and a half. I think we'll get a couple touchdowns. I, I, I do. And uh, they're running backs. they got a couple guys that have done really well, but the rest of that depth chart's kind of beat up. And so, you know, do you run the risk? You know, quarterback injury. I mean, Quinn Ewers had that oblique injury, and, you know, you can't really protect him. He was the quarterback. You got that, that injury in your side. You know, it's not like an ankle. You can just kind of tape up and give somebody a shot and hope for the best. And so I don't think that they're going to be just kind of wide open. I think they'll get a lead in, in at the half. It'll be like it's been the last three weeks is what I think. I think they'll have a double-digit lead at the half. Could be two touchdowns, could be three. And then I think in the four, in the in the in the second half, I think Texas kind of coast a little bit. So I'm picking state to cover. I'm picking Texas to win. All right, in the nightcap, a game that I'll be listening to is I mosey on back to Stark Vegas, Mississippi. Georgia and Alabama from Bryant Denny. This is an interesting one here. I think most people thought Georgia would be a little more dominant than they have been, and they're good, don't get me wrong. But it's gonna be a ridiculous atmosphere. Uh, I think what Kirby's done at Georgia is absolutely legendary. This is also kind of a proving ground for that new staff at Alabama. You know, Kalen DeBoer and those guys, hey, you you knock down Kirby in Georgia, then people are going to believe you for real. But I think all the pressure in this game is on Alabama. Alabama with Jalen Milrow. Kirby, I suspect, is going to devise a game plan to keep him in the pocket and make him be a quarterback rather than just kind of let him get out there and beat you with athleticism because he absolutely can. 
I think a guy like him, you've got to keep him corralled a little bit and make him play football and not just get out there and play backyard football because if you play his game, he's better at it than you are. But I take Georgia in this ball game just because of the fact I think Georgia will find a way to score. I do think it's going to be a lower scoring game, though. South Alabama's at a – Hey, Bulldog fans. Are you fantasy enthusiasts? A lot of people are. I remember those days when we used to do it all by hand and have to wait to the next day to read the box scores to find out who won. Well, Prize Picks does all that work for you. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. That's right. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections to just watch your winning draw in. You can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. Just four, right? And prize picks puts their members first. So all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When my picks hit, I can get my money in as quick as just 15 minutes. How cool is that? You can have fun. It's a very simple way to play. Download the prize picks app today and use code BONEYARD. And you get 50 bucks instantly when you play just $5. That's promo code BONEYARD on prize picks to get $50 instantly when you just play 5 bucks. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize picks, uh, run your own game. How cool is that? Be sure to use the promo code BONEYARD when you download the prize picks app. Hey, fans, if you know me, you know I'm a dog person. I love them. I've got five of them. You've heard them on the show before. How about that? And so when things come up involving dogs, I'm always very acutely aware of it. And you know, our our friend, actress Catherine Heigl, kind of discovered there's a lot of dogs out there suffering with some health issues. And she said there were 16,000 dogs through her foundation. Says she's seen more and more issues with dogs' joints, odors, and health than ever before. After doing a ton of research, she feels there's one place we can look to support any dog's health. It's their food. So she decided to create something she could actually feel good about feeding her own dogs. It's called Superfood Complete. Superfood Complete is made with over 30 of the healthiest ingredients in the world, including several superfoods vital to your dog's health. Badlands Ranch also supports the Jason Debus Heigl Foundation, which has helped rescue thousands of dogs and placed them in loving homes. How great is that? So what's interesting is uh, they sent me some sample products. Guys, I use it basically as a supplement, you know, just to kind of see how they'd like it. They would leave their regular food for the superfood complete. It's crazy. They absolutely love it. So go to badlandsranch.com slash boneyard. And you can order right now and get up to 50% off your regular price order with a 90-day money-back guarantee. They're putting their money where their mouth is. If you want your dog to experience all these incredible things, go to B-A-D-L-A-N-D-S ranch.com slash boneyard. You'll be glad you did. OSU. Nobody's really talking about OSU, right? I mean, just, you know, it's like OSU is just kind of another team. That's how it looks. That's how it feels. And I, I can tell you, my friends back in Baton Rouge, I lived there 16 years. Still got some friends down there and uh, plan to have lunch at one uh, later today on my way to New Iberia. But um, I'm sitting here looking at this thing, and it's like you look at the LSU schedule. And again, they lose to USC, but that's kind of been the norm under Brian Kelly. You drop the big Power 5 opener, right? Just kind of how... Breaks loose, you know. And, of course, State wins in 2020, you know. It's been – they've been in the 0-1 hole a lot lately. They struggled a little bit with Nichols. Finally kind of got it going. They out-athleted them. And then they they slip out of Williams-Brice with a W, and we've talked about it for the last two weeks. You know, South Carolina should have won the game. They should have. Even with an injury to their starting quarterback, they should have won the game. LSU kind of escapes with that, and they take care of UCLA last week. No big issue there. 34-17, but they're just kind of flying on the radar. And it's not like how it felt a couple of years ago. You know, when, when they, they came in there and beat us with, you know, Jaden Daniels back in 2022, I, I remember thinking then, you know, LSU, they, they got a good chance to win the West. And then next thing you know, they do. 
You don't get that same vibe this go around. They're going to get South Alabama in there, and um, you know it's it's not going to be a ball game. If it is, you got big problems. Now you get an open date, and then they host Ole Miss. Ole Miss has had a lot of trouble winning in Baton Rouge. I'm sure it'll be a night game, and why wouldn't it be? LSU pretty much demands that that they absolutely lose their minds when they have to play 11. I mean, they they could play, you know, Louisiana School for Math and Science, and they'd be mad that they played them at ESPN or at SEC Network puts them at 11. They want the night game so they can sit around all day and eat some jambalaya and drink some beers, enjoy some tailgating, then go out there and raise hell for four hours. That's what they want to do. But this is a big ball game, and I do think Ole Miss can go to LSU and lose even though this LSU offense has not been dynamic. And the Ole Miss defense has been really, really good. Again, they hadn't played anybody that's really challenged you offensively. But that could be an interesting game. And then LSU's got to go to Arkansas. And that game has been so weird the last few years. It's just been weird. You know, some 13-10 to 10 type games, 16-10 to 10 type games. It's nuts. There's something about Sam Pittman that brings, you know, LSU just doesn't play well against it for some reason. Then LSU's got to go to A&M, and then they host Alabama. You got to go to Florida. No telling who the interim coach is going to be by then. Then you get Vanderbilt and then Oklahoma to close out the year. So you look at this and say, hey, you know, LSU's going to have a good year. But how long are they going to put up with good years there? Because it really feels like Georgia, and even when Alabama with the coaching change, is a step ahead of LSU. I think many of you probably see it the same way. So we'll see how it plays out. So, again, your winners, Ole Miss, and what I expect will be a weird game, A&M over Arkansas, and what I expect will be a really entertaining game, Oklahoma over Auburn. And, honestly, I could see Oklahoma winning this thing a couple touchdowns. Uh, Texas over Mississippi State, though I do think State covers because the spread is so incredibly high. Uh, Texas is going to win this football game, bar and just a, something completely crazy happening. I'm taking Georgia over Alabama in a close, low-scoring game, and then LSU over South Alabama. I don't really care the quality of that ball game. I don't think anybody else does either. But, um, yeah, we're starting to kind of get into, you know, kind of the ranking of the pack here is we're getting into SEC play. And some people out there that are playing well are going to play some other people that are playing well. And then all of a sudden somebody's season is going to kind of be on the slide, right? And you start jockeying for position in the playoffs. These games are very, very important. As Steve Sarkeesian said earlier this week, that they're going into this game looking at like an SEC championship game because they, they want to be in the SEC title game. So they're going to approach this thing like, hey, this is an SEC game for us. We've got to get up, go play it. It's going to be a capacity crowd. Share with you guys earlier this week, they had the fifth largest crowd in the history of Darrell K. Royal Stadium last weekend for Louisiana Monroe. Yeah, just over 102,000. The record's right at 105. So we fully expect them to have a ton of people there. And I know there's many of our Bulldog fans in, uh, in South East Texas and Central Texas will be making the trip. We uh, certainly appreciate your support and uh, encourage you to come if you can. If you want to get a ticket and you don't have a ticket, you're going to have to find it on a secondary market. Is All of the tickets sold through the university have been exhausted. It is a hard sellout. Uh, and we will be there. Uh, I'm, again, leaving out in the morning. Dave Murray, I'm not sure when Dave's – I think Dave's leaving tomorrow afternoon. But um, we'll be there. I think Sam from the Ledger is going to be there, and uh, Ben from the Dispatch is going to be there. And I think that will fill out our media core. But, uh, yeah, we look forward to going out there giving you coverage. And uh, all of our game day coverage is free. And so we'll do a play-by-play article. And then, of course, we'll have uh, you know, anything that happens on the ground while we're there in pregame warm-ups. And uh, we're going to get to the availability report a little bit later in the show, some things that I want to discuss about that kind of at length. Uh, but I think it's important that, uh, again, we provide coverage for you guys. We, you know, we're not just going to sit home, okay? And uh, it's, a, it's not just a job for us. It's a passion. And so if you're looking for information, and maybe you're looking to hide from it, right? But we're, we're going to give you full coverage. We're going to cover this game just as we would if we expected to go in there and win this football game. It would have been easy to say, you know what, Dave, I wasn't feeling well yesterday, so I'm just going to let you go. But I'm not. And I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm closer to 100% today. A little bit tired, but, uh, yeah, I feel better. And so we're going to make that trip. And not to mention, you know, it's like trading some messages with Davion Jackson, his coach. You know, it's like once you commit to that, 
it's like, hey, you know, I want to come and check you guys out. Not to mention, too, I mean, what does it mean for that kid, right? It's true. And I'm sure his teammates thinking, hey, there's going to be a guy here from the National Network, from 247 Sports, to watch our game. You know, those are the things you look for. And there's a reason you go to games. Every week that I go to a high school game, I find somebody else. So I say, you know what, hey. And many of those guys don't have a profile yet. You know, the 2026 guys and sometimes 2027, as I shared with you guys last week, uh, you know, saw the big uh, 2028 lineman from Quitman who's absolutely outstanding. He's a freshman, 6'5", 280. It's ridiculous, man. It's not to the guy that size at that age moves as fluidly as he does. But uh, and I go back to the Kosciuszko game with Keith Lay. I mean, you know, it's just Keith. I go see Winona play Kosciuszko, look out there and like, who is this kid? Hopefully he's a junior. Turns out he is. Right? But there's a reason you go. There's a reason you get out there and you look for players. Uh, because in our industry, you know, the thing that I've learned is uh, things have changed a lot in the last uh, 10 years uh, for guys like us. People have become incredibly reliant on huddle video, right, and word of mouth and social media and things like that. Nothing will ever replace in-person evaluations. I don't care who you are or where you're from. There's a reason the coaches go out and evaluate players in person too. It'd be much, it'd be a lot easier and a lot more cost effective if they could just sit in their office. But why do you think they do it? Well, they do it because they have to see value in it, not just so the kids can see them there. They're looking for players. It's a big part of it. And so we're going to go out too. I remember years ago when um, Scott Kennedy and those guys ran scout. We were expected to be at least one high school game a week, at least one. And there were some weekends, and back in those days, I didn't cover Mississippi State team coverage. I was just a recruiting guy. You know, Dave Murray and Gene took care of all that stuff. But, uh, you know, I would go watch high school games and then watch Mississippi State play on TV when I wasn't coming to games. I didn't go to road games back then. And so, like, say for an example, if we're playing in Tuscaloosa, I was living in Baton Rouge, and there were times that uh, I'd go to a junior college game on Thursday, go to a high school game in Mississippi on the Gulf Coast on Friday, and then sometimes on Saturdays, if we played at night, I'd run down to New Orleans and watch a doubleheader. You know, we were expected to get out there. And not to mention, too, not just being expected, you should expect the best from yourself. You go out there and you get new pictures, right? You get all these great new images. You get video. Go tape games and things like that to, to give our subscribers something that nobody else has. And so, no, but not as many people do it anymore. We still do it. You know, as I mentioned earlier, Rion, um, on the road tonight, when saw Grenada High School play against Bartlett, Tennessee. Of course, Mississippi State with two 25 commitments on the uh, Bartlett, Tennessee roster. Running back Jaron Johnson and, and linebacker Austin Howard. And uh, Grenada wins the ball game. But, um, you know, you get out and go for a reason. It, it would be so much – it's easier not to be great. That's the truth. And there are a lot of people out there willing to reward mediocrity, and it's so funny, too. Some of the same people that say that, well, well you don't – you know, you're accepting mediocrity, and then they turn right around and, and do the same thing. They accept mediocrity. You know, and that's the thing. Like, I, even some of my peers within our own network – you know, they say, hey, you went to high school game? Hey, can you give me a picture of this kid? Well, yeah, I'm happy to do it. Hey, when you go see this, t- oh, we're not going to be there. It's just interesting how the game has changed. You know, some people are just so reliant on other people to do their jobs for them. And I just, you know, I'm old school. And as long as I'm involved in this, we're going to go watch um, high school players play. I also think about, too, what it means to those young men uh, for us to make the effort to be there. Uh, it's very significant. And, um I remember last year when I went to Winona versus Grenada. Took my wife over there, took pictures, I did video. Get over there early, have a chance to talk to Marcus Wood and some of the JUCO coaches and things like that. And that's always an invaluable resource too. You know, who are you here to see? You know, uh, but after pregame warmups, TJ Lockhart, Tyler Lockhart, and, and Fat Clark all come over to say hello. And then I'm leaving, and uh, Fred Clark's like, hey, thanks for coming. You know, those things are important. And as long as uh, I can do it, as long as I'm old, old enough and not too old, as long as I can afford the gas money, right? Uh, because, uh, you know, I don't have 247 paying my expenses. You know, Jeans Page, Inc., Steve and Dana Robertson pay my expenses. But uh, we still go out and cover these games because we believe it's important and we think it's important to you.
All right, time for today's top 10 list. As always, brought to you by CloseWithBlair.com. That's C-L-O-S-E with Blair, B-L-A-I-R.com. Blair is a mortgage professional with 23 years of experience. Nobody stays in any industry for 20 plus years by accident. It just doesn't work that way, right? Uh, Blair has closed loans for several Boneyard listeners and uh, told me just the other day, picked up another one. Hey, just got another application from a Boneyard listener. I'm so grateful that our listeners are taking advantage of the professional services that are provided to you by Blair Chandler, right? Top 1% close ratio in the country, back to back to back years. That's a significant thing. And, and to think this is one of our guys, right? I like to keep business in the family when we can. Because that money is going to wind up buying season tickets to Mississippi State football games or perhaps making a donation to Bulldog Initiative or buying Mississippi State merchandise. I mean, it all trickles back down in many respects to Mississippi State. And so I encourage you to do business with Blair Chandler for that reason, but more importantly, because he's the best person for the job. He'll get you pre-qualified. If you're a first-time home buyer, you need to get pre-qualified. You do. That way you know exactly what you're looking for. Because what happens, you know, people, sometimes people want to skip the starter house, right? It's like, no, guys, I'm telling you, you need to do it the right way. Get pre-qualified. Don't try to keep up with the Joneses and go buy a house beyond your means. Even if your bank's willing to do it, they may stretch that DTI a little bit or, or maybe let you give a stated income you know, it's rather than providing income documentation. And so Blair Chandler can help you through all the nuances of the lending process. He can be your advocate with underwriting. Phone number? 601-500-2344, 601-500-2344. So again, looking for the new home, looking to maybe refinance, maybe look to buy a game day condo. I don't know your needs, but I know this, they can be met with Blair Chandler would close with Blair.com. Okay, caught a bit of an audible. I had some other things lined up. And it takes a lot of research to do these lists. And sometimes like some bands like, like you throw a white lion or white snake at me, you know, I, I could probably put the list together in just like five minutes, right? I, I could do it. You give me a shine down thing. Hey, Steve ranked the shine down ballads, and maybe we do that soon. Uh, or, or give me the bangers or the Jason Todd collection. I, I, I can do that stuff without even thinking. But some of these lists take some time. And uh, I've had a couple of really good suggestions that I'm going to have to put some time and effort into. While I'm on the road, I plan to listen to some of the stuff that you guys have suggested and see if we can't put together a list. But uh, we have done something similar with this before. But um, earlier this week, MSG, the Michael Schenker group, Michael Schenker, the blonde-haired brother of Rudy Schenker from the Scorpions, released some covers from his time in UFO. And if you don't know UFO, you should. Absolutely amazing. Amazing. And Michael Schenker was a lead guitar player. Uh, I remember when I got the first MSG album, it was incredible. And I was like, where, is this, where has this been? You know. So Axel covers a song with MSG, an old UFO song. So that got me thinking, what about other guest spots? I broke some of my own rules to put this list together because I like this music so much. There are some covers um, and there are some duplications. Like he did some, uh, Axel did some work with Sebastian Bach on the 2007 album Angel Down, which is great. I like the Sebastian Bach solo stuff. And I think the stuff from the uh, early to mid 2000s is as good as anything he did with Skid Row, at least vocally. So maybe the songwriting production values not maybe on par with Slave to the Grind, but uh, Bach did a great job. That. I remember ordering his CD from his website, Bring Him Back Alive, the first one. It's great. And he even does some Skid Row stuff live on there. Some live stuff and some uh, studio stuff. And they even covered Godzilla. Yeah, you know, but you, if you're old school, you know that song. So we're going to start with that. Number 10 on our list from Sebastian Bach's album, Angel Down. And all three of these Bach songs are from that album. It's the cover of the Aerosmith classic, Back in the Saddle. And it's so weird to hear Bach and Axl Rose kind of harmonizing together. It's sublime. Number nine, also from Sebastian Bach's Angel Down album, it's uh, Love is a Blank Slap. And you can fill in the word. I try to keep it a PG-13 show around here. And uh, that's a banger right there. It's an absolute banger. The guitar work on it's incredible. It really is. If you like 
Sebastian Bach and you like Axl Rose, I'm telling you, you're going to enjoy this Angel Down album if you're unfamiliar with it. All right, I mentioned that earlier, the Michael Schenker Group, MSG, did, uh, I think it's My Years with UFO, or My Time in UFO. So it's a new album that dropped this week, and Axl Rose is singing the UFO classic Love to Love. The original is fabulous, and Axl does a good job on it. Of course, Axl doesn't have uh, maybe the... Um, the voice that he once did. And I see a lot of people out there being critical of him singing live. And here's the thing that I'll say about that. Guys, these bands had their heyday over 30 years ago. And many of them have continued to tour and sing their lungs out for three decades. No, they're not going to sound like what they sound like in the studio when they go live. No, they're not going to sound like they listened, like they were when you listened to them back in high school. It's like, oh, I can't believe, you know, he's gained some weight, you know, looks like an old woman now. I'm like, dude, get over yourself. So do you, right? Except he's out there entertaining millions of people. What are you doing? You're running a period of the fast break, getting a plate lunch? That's the thing, you know, it's, we talk about this stuff all the time. You know, it's like, I, I think what people don't fully appreciate, and allow me to be the sponsor here just for a moment, just for Uno momento, por favor. One of the things that I that I know, because I, I have had these things myself, and I believe that I have evolved and matured to a point that I can be honest about some of my past behavior, even in sobriety. When we go out and take a pot shot at somebody else that is doing something or has done something that we cannot do, that we are not capable of doing. Either we're not talented enough or never been given the opportunity. We're not hurting them. We're hurting us. We're letting ourselves off the hook. And it's so incredible, too. I, you know, I, I think about some of my own friends. They've had the same opportunity that I've had. It's true. And some of my peers have had the same opportunities that have I, I've had. You know, and I look back and I, I, I'm i never satisfied. Never. I have people all the time that say, hey, Steve, you know, do you think maybe you should slow down with these books? No, I don't know how long this is going to last. You know, you never know. And I wrote at the end of the dude, I said, hey, you, you never know when it's your last book. And if this is my last one, I'm, I'm going out on a high note, right? And you never know. I may not make it home from Texas. And I hate to sound so alarmist, but that's true. But the reality of it is, is when people go out and they're criticizing, you know, Don Dockin or whoever, you know, maybe it's some country music superstar, even though the vocal range isn't the same. You understand my point. People are like, oh, man, look at that guy. He's, he's so fat and out of shape now. Guys, you, you paid to see him play. Right? And it's like, hey, well, that guy, you know, Everybody wants to see, not everybody, but a lot of people want to see the hero stumble. They can't wait for that to happen. And that's more about them than it is about the hero. It's true. My baby sister, I love her to death, Reagan. If you know Reagan, you, to know her is to love her. She's Reagan Robertson, but she's married now to a great guy named William Lunsford. Uh, they got a house full of girls. And uh, Dylan, the oldest... But, uh, you know, she sometimes she'll say, you know, I, I hate that I see some of this stuff on Twitter and the way like some people talk to you, like, oh, miss people and things like that. And I say, sweetheart, that's why God invented a mute button, right? Those people can't see me to touch me. I'm so far beyond their grasp. Why, why in the world would I waste my time listening and reading to that kind of stuff? It's just not worth it, you know? And so, like, again, Axl Rose is out there doing the best he can. And I'm just glad that somebody out there is still performing these songs, right? You can go see Guns N' Roses. You can buy a ticket and go see Guns N' Roses. Not a Guns N' Roses cover band, right? Not Axl Rose with a bunch of studio musicians. You can go see Axl slash Duff, you know, kind of the core group. Izzy Stradlin just couldn't pull it together to do it. Steven Adler, of course, is kind of proven to be unreliable. But occasionally, Steven gets behind the skins and... And that uh, kind of makes it happen. But you can go. You can still go see Guns N' Roses. It's not the Guns N' Roses of 89. It's not. 
But I'm very grateful that we have the opportunity to do that. You can still go see Motley Crue. You can bring your kid with you and go see Motley. And no, Vince is not the same guy that he was in 91. He's not. None of us are. I'm going to get off my soapbox now. But that's just kind of how I feel about it. It, Again, when I have done that in the past, when I have been critical, you know, it's like, hey, look at this guy. They ought to give it up already. That's just me being insecure. It's It's got nothing to do with them. It's true. I mean, you could take it for whatever you want. All right, moving along here. Number seven. Uh, it's a live version of Bruce Springsteen and Axl Rose singing Come Together, the old Beatles standard. Great track, too. They alternate the vocals. It's, it really works well. Number six, Rolling Stones, also a live version of Salt of the Earth that was released back in 2020. Really, really good. And it's Mick and Axl kind of trading vocals. I dig it a lot. Number five, Gilby Clark, former guitar player in Guns N' Roses uh, during the uh, following the Slash years. Or is it yours? Um, Gilby did a uh, solo album called Pawn Shop Guitars. Covered a Rolling Stone song, Dead Flowers. Axel sang the vocal. Number four, we've had this song on before. Uh, Don Henley, I Will Not Go Quietly. Axel's part on that, maybe the best part of the song. I like the, uh, the up-tempo guitar on this thing, too. Number three, the final of our Sebastian Bach songs from the Angel Down album. It's a great track called Stuck Inside. It's an absolute banger. The vocal on it will absolutely get next to you. Number two, from the Decline of Western Civilization Part 2 Metal Years official motion picture soundtrack. And if you can find that somewhere to stream, it's worth watching. It was great. I love it. It's Alice Cooper and Axl Rose doing Under My Wheels. That's available in a couple different formats out there, but that's where it originates from. It was written for... Penelope Spears' documentary about the metal scene uh, out in, uh, in Hollywood. But number one, and maybe a surprise for you, it's Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols. Not a singer at all, had a solo album, and uh, Axel actually wrote on this one, and it's I Did You Know Wrong. I know we've had that one on before. It's my favorite of the collaborations. I think you'll dig it if you don't know it. I think that's probably a song you'll end up downloading. It's not Sex Pistol E, right? It's not the raw, unadulterated punk that, that was. This is a little bit more rock and roll. Kind of finds a good pocket, kind of rides in. Axel kind of co-wrote the song too. So it's great. So that's your Axel guest spots. And again, I know we've done something similar with Axel before, but with new information coming out and my willingness to break my own rules, we get a good list out of this. And I'm a Guns fan. And I saw there was some... Um, some organization a couple years ago that uh, had Axl Rose as one of the most uh, versatile vocalists in the history of rock and roll. Right? He doesn't have the operatic range of like a Robert Plant, but some of the things that he does with his voice, the nuance in his voice, uh, gives it a lot of character. So there you go. We're going to celebrate Axl Rose. Congratulations to Axl. New single out uh, with MSG. And uh, again, it may not be exactly what you're used to, but if you know UFO, I think you'll dig it. Uh, So there you go. If you have ideas for the top 10 list, reach out, let us know. Best way to do that is to hit us up on social media. Roy's available at Dogmatic67 on Twitter or X, whatever you're calling it these days. And then, of course, on Spotify, where our great list are housed. Just hit the subscribe button. Just kind of follow when you need new music. Maybe you're tired of your old playlist, and chances are you you are, and you've kind of fallen into habits. You need something to kind of... Change it up a bit. Go pick one of our lists and check it out. You can find me on all forms of social media at Scout Steve R. All right, next segment of the show brought to you by Campus Bookmart, a Starkvillian institution. Absolutely, the, one of the best places in Starkville to go, right? Because you can go in there and dream a little bit, right? It's like, how cool would all this stuff look in my house, right? Or in my fan cave? Well, you can bring it home. You can. If you're looking for Mississippi State merchandise and apparel, look no further than Campus Bookmark. Miss Kathy Brown does an amazing job really buying anything out there that's worth buying. It's got the Mississippi State logo on it. And they know what real maroon looks like, too. You take your chances when you go to Amazon and places like that, and you get vendors that aren't really familiar with us. They just kind of go out there and and, uh, grab a shirt and throw a Mississippi State logo on it. The next thing you know, you show up at Davis Wade or Duty Noble or Humphrey Coliseum, you're wearing a crimson shirt. We can't have that. Right? We can't. So trust the experts at Campus Bookmart. Now, you can't make it to town? You can shop online at campusbookmart.net. And by being a loyal Boneyard listener, we've got a promo code for you. It's BSR. Stands, beautiful Steve Robertson. 
That gets you free shipping on all orders over $75. Bucks, and you order less than $75, absolutely incomplete. Okay, let's go over the um, availability report. It has been updated on Thursday. Of course, there will be another one on game day. But um, <clears throat> here's where we are. And I tell you this too. Look at like look at this old miss, uh, <laughs> old miss report too. Maybe they're just being more comprehensive though. They got a lot of people banged up. Most of them are probable though. But um, yeah, not a hundred percent by any stretch. But uh, you get probably the most lengthy report is the old miss report. But uh, we look at this Mississippi State when some players that were questionable are now been switched to out. Of course, quarterback Blake Shapin is out. Cornerback Diego Brumfield still out. Trevion Wright still out. We just can't get those guys right. It's not their fault. Creed Whittemore is out. Tyler Woodard is out. Trent Hudson is out. Kedrick Bingley Jones was questionable, now out. Kevon Lee, we knew that he was out. Chris Keyes Jr. was questionable. He's out. Calvin Dinkins still out. We just can't get Dink right. I, I, I can't explain it. Uh, Isaac Smith was probable on the initial report, and now he's listed as questionable. Uh, I suspect, I don't know this officially, but I suspect he is in concussion protocol. You know, he was a victim of the uh, big crackback block that got flagged and negated the touchdown. And uh, so we'll see what happens. He is expected to travel. We don't know if he's going to play. But, uh, yeah, word made the rounds last night that Creed Whittemore is opting out of the season and plans to redshirt, and we fully expect him to go in the portal after that. We've learned this evening that Trent Hudson, wide receiver, is also redshirting. Now, you, you may know, and this is not to be judgmental of anybody, that uh, you know Trent Hudson's dad has been uh, very critical of the staff, that Trent Hudson was listed as wide receiver one, and we thought that he would be a guy that would play extensively. He is not, which, again, kind of kind of you know lends itself to thinking these depth charts are again for entertainment value only right that's just you know you can't get too caught up in that but uh, there is a recent trend you know kind of all started with the UNLV quarterback uh, announcing that they uh, they were gonna you know kind of forego the season right and uh, and not play over uh, something to do with some NIL stuff his name is Matthew Sluka or Slucka. I apologize for that if I don't know it. But uh, a lot of back and forth about this deal that um, there was an ideal promised that has not come to fruition. Now, that's not what's going on, we believe, with Creed Whittemore and Trent Hudson. Completely different. Okay, so the things that I'm going to say right now, I don't want people to misconstrue that, to think that I'm being critical of these two guys. Uh, the Sluka thing, they have been very public about it and said, I was promised certain things. I don't have them. And you know what? If you if UNLV promised things and didn't come through with it, and shame on them. But there's also some other stories out there and some other rumors that uh, because of the fact that they've had some success, that now all of a sudden they feel like that Matthew's market value has changed and he's entitled to more compensation. UNLV has come out and said, hey, we never promised him $100,000. And I don't know if they've got that kind of money. And then one of his teammates went out today. But, um, you know, it's, it's so interesting, the world in which we live. And I think many of you feel like I do. There are some people out there that are going to be contrarians no matter what happens. And other people are going to come out. And uh, no matter what you say, they're always going to play, always play devil's advocate. But I think we're at a very sad state of affairs. Because here's the thing, and uh, all of us at some point, I say all of us, most of us at some point played team sports, and you probably had a dad or an uncle or a grandfather that was uh, a role model in your life, and maybe you went out there and you found some adversity on the fields of play, and you're like, you know, I want to quit. I'm not playing enough. I'm not any good. I don't like it. You know, it's too hot. And I know how it was for me. My dad said, you know what, hey, if you don't want to play anymore, you don't have to. After the season, you made a commitment to this team and to this coach and these teammates, and you're going to see it through. You're going to play out the year, and if you, want to, if you never want to play again, that's fine with me. You never have to play anything again if you don't want to. But we're going to honor our commitment here. That has been lost. That has absolutely been lost. It's like, well, 
all of a sudden the season isn't going the way that I want it to go with, to have it to go. So I'm going to opt out. And listen, I support players' right to transfer. I do. And everybody's got to do what's best for themselves. And a lot of times that's not maybe fully aligned with what's best for Mississippi State. But uh, I got some strong opinions about this. And uh, here's what I'll say, like, about the NIL stuff. And I know there's some NIL fatigue. I'm tired of it, too. But it, it's, it's a necessary part of, of college athletics these days. But if we've come to terms on a deal, we are not, nor should we, renegotiate in season. The deal's made, right? So you, you don't get to come back later and say, hey, I'd like a bigger piece of the pie. People say, but Steve, that's... That's part of a free market economy. Sure it is. Sure it is. But at what, at what point can fans, and in some respect coaches, but mainly fans, we are not involved in a decision-making process. We're not sitting down and negotiating an NIL deal. We're not involved with who plays and who doesn't. We're just there to support the team. At what point are players bound to us? We're bound to them, but when are they bound to us? And I'm not saying you got to stay forever, but when you put on that uniform, you immediately become a hero to many people that cheer for Mississippi State. And many of them you'll never meet. Where is that relationship in all of this? You think about some of the players that you have loved over the years, right? I had somebody tell me when all this first started, said, you know what, Steve, I, you know, I guess I got to go buy a Dak jersey for my kid. A Dak Mississippi State jersey, and we'll just wear 15. It's a kind of a throwback because I can't afford to go buy a brand-new jersey every year because my kid's favorite player transfers. It's a sad state of affairs. And I can't speak for anybody else, but I will speak to how I've raised my own children. And if you've met my children, I think you'll agree, Dan and I have done a great job raising kids. I joke with her sometimes that uh, I think we did a disservice to the world by not having more children. But none of my children have ever quit. Ever. I've had some that have finished, but we've never left a team midseason. Never. Never nor would I have allowed that. Even they, the, the, all of them are adults now, all of them above 18. My youngest, of course, is 19 and a sophomore at Mississippi State. But when we make a commitment to something, we are going to see that through. And I have lived that, not just preached that. And so one of the things that I'm going to say, and this may uh, hurt some feelings, and uh, I'll look around here and see if I can't find some sympathy for you. I don't think I'm going to. This is a parental failure. It absolutely is. It's a parental failure. The adults in this process have failed. You say, but Steve, how can you say that? Well, I see the evidence of poor upbringing. That's what I see. It's like, hey, I'm the quarterback at UNLV. And uh, again, I don't know all the details, so I'm kind of speaking on what, what's public and what's not, right? So... <clears throat> So we agree to something, and then we're three games into this thing. We have sweated, we have bled, we have grinded with our teammates all through spring practice, all through the summer workouts. We've talked about relying on each other and that we can go out here and shock the world. Well, now all of a sudden, I got some agents in my ear that say, hey, you you deserve more money. And let's be honest about that. It's not that they want you to make more money, it's for you. They want you to go make money, more money for them. And so this is the system that the adults have put in place. So you can't necessarily fault the kids, and we call them kids, even though some of them are 20 years old. I was married at 20. Um, but yeah, this is a situation where there was a broken system in place, And maybe it wasn't broken in two. Maybe there was cracks in the foundation. And now we have basically set up a system, the adults I'm talking about, and and, and the lawyers have all put a system in place now that basically 
is cutting fans and in many respects the university out of this. I remember a time, and I saw a tweet about this earlier. I think it was a Mississippi State person tweeted it out. Somebody retweeted it across my timeline. I believe it was a bulldog. It said, I remember those days when people chose a school out of loyalty, love, and tradition. I miss those days, and so do I. I do. Now, you still have some players to do. Let's not paint with a broad brush here. Because there are some kids out there that are being advised poorly. And I think you learn a very, very, very valuable lesson in life when you make an adult decision like this, right? Um, it, let me ask you this. Knowing what we know about this situation at UNLV, and Matthew Slug is a very, very talented player. And again, if, if he was promised something and, wasn't, and, and they didn't come through with it, if that's correct, then the shame is on UNLV, right? You can't make these false promises. And there's been a bunch of that with NIL already. You know, there's a bunch of it hadn't been made public either. And sometimes it does, and then all of a sudden a kid goes on Twitter and says, hey, I didn't get what I was promised, and then they gets remedied and the tweet gets deleted, right? But all that understood, knowing what you know now, if Matthew Slucka's resume came across your desk, would you hire him? I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I want a drama-free organization. And this is a person here that is kind of proven one way or another, no matter who's at fault, that, hey, I, I'm, I'm a person that's going to bring drama to your organization. Maybe I get involved there. Maybe I work hard. And all of a sudden, if I decide, hey, I'm not getting what I want out of this, uh, I'm, I'm going to leave you right in the middle of it. And again, I think about, too, what, what message are you sending to your teammates? Like, there are a lot of people that think UNLV can be a Power 5, excuse me, a G5 playoff participant that they could be good enough to make the playoff this year. And so because, and, and again, what, what is your name, your branding, and your character worth? Is it worth $100,000? You know, for some people that have never had that, it would say, well, yeah, it is. Steve, you know, yeah, I'd sell out for a hundred grand. I'd stop playing for a hundred grand. And I think you're a sucker for the quick reward. You know, it's biblical, really. And in all religious texts, it talks about the value of a good name. You know, a good name is worth its weight in gold. You know, think about some of the players that have come through our program. You know, think about some of these players uh, like a Jet Johnson, right? That dreamed of going to Mississippi State, and he came in here and uh, gave it everything he had. Was a very productive player for us. You know, he wasn't uh, really an NFL prospect, but he came in here. He was a great college player. If Jed Johnson's resume came across your desk, are you going to hire him? You absolutely are. Yeah, absolutely are. And I tell you, not only because of the fact that Jed Johnson played football at Mississippi State, he played with character and played banged up a lot because he loved Mississippi State. We shared the same love for the same institution. In addition to that, how many times did Jed Johnson get called up to post-game media after a difficult loss and handle himself with dignity and respect and for the love of his teammates? How many times when he had a big ball game did he get up there and say, you know what, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my teammates? It's an important aspect of it. So, yes, I'm hiring Jed Johnson. And you know what, if there's a Jed Johnson out there from Iowa State or Boogaloo Tech, I'm going to hire that guy too. Because when I go do my due diligence and I find out, hey, this is a guy that stays, this is a guy's word who means something. And, yes, I'm a little old school because I think character matters. I think character matters more than cash. And I'm not going to sit here and say that everybody's not entitled to their fair market value in a NIL economy that the adults put into to place, right? Everybody, in many respects, lives a will to power. And so like, hey, I've got representation and they believe that I should be getting paid more. There's a better way to handle this, in my estimation. And so again, I'm not... I'm not lumping Creed Whittemore or Trent Hudson in with that, but it just gives us an opportunity to kind of discuss this. And, you know, 
Do I expect Creed to transfer? Absolutely. I absolutely do. Wish him the best. Grateful for his contributions to Mississippi State. He played last year, got banged up a little bit too. Uh, He's an explosive player. He is. But, um, yeah, it's disappointing. You know, because here we are, like, we get on the show and, and write articles, hey, we all need to be pulling together in the same direction. We all need to be pulling for Mississippi State. Then we find out that we have some players that are not willing to do that. You know what? So we're going to move on. And, again, thanks for your contributions. We're going to move on. But I think I would venture to say, too, that um, there, there is a part of all of this that our fans feel betrayed by this. And, again, we're not always going to be mutually aligned. And I'm not going to sit here and, and uh, besmirch anybody's character without knowing all the details. You know, I don't know what's going on in Creed Whittemore or Trent Hudson's life. I, I don't know. You know, but I believe this is really about playing time. Based on what I've heard, every bit of this is like playing time. It's like, hey, I don't want to waste a year of eligibility. You only get a finite number of those if I'm not going to play extensively. You know, and, and Creed may decide, you know what, I'm going to leave here and I'm going to go somewhere else. I may go to Central Florida. And uh, I think I can play a lot more down there and just give my career a reset. And listen, I get it. Not everybody signed up for this. But here's the thing about that, too. You know, when somebody believes in you, they're willing to pay for your education, willing to compensate you with NIL, uh, give you a ton of gear, uh, there has to be some sort of uh, quid pro quo and all that. And uh, I'm a firm believer in you, you dance with the one that's brung you. Now, you come in here and you decide, you know, after a couple of years, hey, I'm probably better off going somewhere else to play. I think that's perfectly acceptable. You know, everybody's got the right to do that. But uh, to do it in the middle of a year, you know, again, not judging him. I just think the whole thing is um, it's really more a commentary on the state of college athletics. You know, it's like I think we after after Sluka went out, then all of a sudden you saw like a half dozen guys around the country. And, you know, Mississippi State hadn't commented on this, nor should they. Right. And, uh, you know, the players themselves, not that I've seen, have put anything out there, but uh, we were able to confirm this evening that Trent Hudson is redshirting. At least that's the plan. And so, again, everybody's got to do what's best for themselves, and uh, we have to do what's best for Mississippi State. And it's one of those things, too. I I think a lot about Jeff Levy, right? You know, you show up on the plane, you're all excited, you ring the cowbell, we all come out, meet him at the airport. And um, this isn't what he signed up for either. It's nobody's fault, but it is. You know, it's one of those things that, you know, there's some things that have happened. You know, one of the very first press conferences of the season, you find out Jeffrey Pittman's not with the team. That was a player we were counting on. Now, I think we've kind of overcome that in some respects. Then the next thing you know, Kevon Lee's hurt, Right. Uh, then you find out Leon Bell is no longer on the team. Eric Taylor no longer on the team. And listen, as we discussed before, I mean, sometimes you got to call the herd to save the herd. And now we find out now that two other players are not going to be with us the rest of the way. And so the thing that I think about with all of this is that, uh, you know, some things kind of have to change. There's a lot that goes in this. And, again, you can't fault players for operating within the rules that the adults established. And so, again, you know, my comments about the parental stuff are more about this, this NIL stuff. You know, we're going to hold out for more money, you know. Um, but it's one of those things that I, I, I feel for Jeff Lebby and I feel for our fans because we want to win. And then week after week after week after week after week, for one reason or another, there's a player that may help us win that is no longer on the team. And so we know it's going to be a difficult year. You know, we knew in the beginning it wasn't going to be a great year. We were just hoping for a mediocre year. We were just hoping to get six and six and get into a bowl game somewhere. We were just hoping that was the case. We were hoping to be uh, pretty exciting on offense. Hadn't proven to be the case. Now the starting quarterback is out for the year. Saw Michael Van Buren today. I was at the Seal Junior Complex. Uh, Passed Mike as he's walking out with uh, two handfuls of Gatorade. I said, Mike, how you doing? He goes, I'm doing great. 
I was happy to hear that. You know, Mike's going to lead our team into the, uh, the Valley of the Kings on Saturday. I want my quarterback to be confident. He looked great to me, you know. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But, um, you know, my allegiance – are to the people and the players that are showing allegiance to Mississippi State. For everybody else, wish them the best. Not going to be petty about it. But something has to change. And uh, we're going to talk about that in the next segment of the show. Uh, so let's, uh, let's celebrate the Stark Vegas Clubhouse right now. And uh, business is booming out there. Uh, check in with those guys every now and again. They go, oh, yeah, things are going great. Uh, the advertising, I think, has worked. A lot of people didn't know about the Stark Vegas Clubhouse. Now you do. Uh, and I can tell you this. If you want to bring, like if you want a, a weekend to remember, you know, or a midweek or a staycation to remember, the Stark Vegas Clubhouse is the best place to stay in the Golden Triangle. You can accommodate a large, a large group. Five bedrooms, two baths, that big back porch area, the fire pit, the full service kitchen. Hi, the wet bar. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, you could like buy your groceries on the way into town. And, like, never leave, right? How, how cool does that sound? Hey, we're just going to hang out here and play video games and watch movies, and we're going to cook steaks, and we're going to get around the fire at night and uh, maybe have some adult beverages, and we're just going to kind of hang and chill and be together and get caught up and make some new memories together. Uh, you know, maybe it's a, uh, a cousin's weekend. You know, maybe you bring the kids to town, give everybody a chance to kind of spend some time together. I mean, you know, you think about your own cousins, think about your kids and how important it is to spend time with the, their family. So you can make that happen. Whether it's a couple's weekend, college roommate weekend, a family weekend, maybe mom and dad, you're going to bring all the kids under one roof. How cool is that? The, maybe that? Maybe the family's grown so big you can't do it all at your house and you don't want somebody to have to go get a hotel room. Stay at the Star Vegas Clubhouse. And maybe you're bringing a work group to town. You know, rather than have everybody spread all over the county in different hotel rooms or Airbnbs, stay at a Start Vegas clubhouse. Have some common areas to work and then your own personal quarters to retire to in the evening. Yeah. So when you Google the Stark Vegas clubhouse, their Facebook page is going to auto-populate. You can check out the pictures of all the amenities that are available to you and your guest. Also, some booking options will come up too. You got Airbnb, you got VRBO. You can go that route if you want to. But if you want to save some money on your stay, I can help you with that. Book through the Evolve website. Promo code BSR10, BSR10, gets you 10, 10% off your stay. How cool is that? 10%. I, I love the Stark Vegas Clubhouse. Some friends of mine have used it. Uh, we were going to use it for Thanksgiving, but you know what? It's booked up. Yeah, it's true. And, uh, you know, maybe we do it some other day, but we want to get everybody together. And just it's so fun to have everybody together. You know that energy you have when everybody's under one roof, right? When all your kids are there and it's like we can just enjoy being together and we got nowhere to be. To me, that makes a Stark Vegas clubhouse just seem like a perfect place. And I live here in Starkville, right? And I got a big house out here in the country. But uh, we just think it would be a great time to get everybody up there somewhere new, you know, and just be able to go out there and just kind of have a staycation with everybody and just have a great time. I encourage you to do the same. Again, the Stark Vegas Clubhouse, the best place to stay in the Golden Triangle. Okay, so Steve, how do we fix all this? Well, it's complicated. You know, one of the things that is, uh, I won't say infuriating to me, but it's kind of interesting to me, and I, mean, and I have a negative opinion about some of this. Uh, the NCAA made a lot of bad decisions over the years, but at the end of the day, the NCAA is not the federal government, Right. Uh, the NCAA is basically the member institutions that are all part of that organization. It's the league presidents and the NCAA presidents that vote on these things. It's not like that the NCAA can just issue an edict and say, hey, here's the new rule, right? They can make some rules within themselves of how they police certain matters and investigate certain matters and some safety protocols and things like that. But ultimately, the membership has to vote. But... Where are we when a voluntary organization, like your participation in college athletics, is voluntary? It's not a right. It's a privilege. And so when you sign that NCAA documentation, you sign that scholarship agreement, you're kind of saying, hey, I'm going to play by the rules of the organization. And then we get into it and say, I don't want to do that anymore. And so it's like, hey, what's next? 
within our country, like when the NCAA can't enforce its own rules that everybody agreed to, that really complicates matters, right? It's like, okay, we're going to put some guardrails up about NIL compensation. Then people's like, oh, no, you can't do that. I mean, the cat's out of the bag now. Right? Pandora's box is open. We knew that it would be. And, of course, I still blame Mark Emmert for all that, but that, that's wasted emotional energy because he's gone. There's nothing he can do to fix it. But their inaction has kind of led us here. And he got some people out there trying to figure this thing out, and uh, there have been some congressional hearings. There is a lot of discussion that at some point there will be a national law. And it's interesting. People say, well, you know, why do we need the federal government to get involved when this is a, uh, you know, a, a voluntary organization, but then you're not going to give them the teeth and the strength in which to enforce their own rules. So we're going to have to have a national law. That has to happen. Got to be a national law to level the playing field. And the reason that I say that is because like in Utah, we discussed this before, in Utah, like the school itself can negotiate the deal. The school itself can use, like, hey, we, we can work with our sponsors and we can get you, you know, so many hundred thousand dollars. In other states, you can't do that. And there are many states that don't even have an NIL law. So there's no oversight for any of that stuff. It's a wild, wild west. And so what I think is going to have to happen is we're going to have to unionize and we're going to have to have a CBA. And listen, I'm not a big union guy. I understand the the purposes of unions. I get it. But I'm not one of those kinds of people that goes out there and says, hey, this is how it's got to be. We have to create a level playing field. And this is not just about Mississippi State. This is about college athletics as a whole. Mississippi State uh, is going to struggle in some respects in the pay-for-play era. It's true. And you say, but Steve, how could that be? Well, have you looked at the Bulldog Club numbers lately? And you go look at what other people have? While we are a salt of the earth type people, we, we're also a group of people sometimes that are kind of reluctant to give. That's the reality of that. Now, we've got some people out there that give so incredibly generously that uh, they'll probably get to take the escalator when they get to heaven rather than have to walk up the steps to the pearly gates. And so we've got to find a way to make it work. Now, the administration, of course, has committed you know, some resources to kind of empower us to be very aggressive in the portal this year. And uh, one of the things that we've said for a while now, we just kind of got to tread water until they get these things figured out. But I think a CBA is probably the only thing that makes any sense, and that's a collective bargaining agreement. And everybody's going to get something. With this new rev share thing, everybody's going to get something. Your deep snapper is going to get something. Your backup catcher on a softball team is going to get something. The rev share is going to come through, and everybody's going to get something. You know, one of the things that I have argued for years about is the, uh, you know, the scholarship and equity. You know, just because somebody excels at one sport, they get a full scholarship, but they excel at another one, they don't. That's something we should have fixed. And with this rev share thing, in some respects, we are going to fix that. You know, you shouldn't have a situation where Ethan Small is a first-round draft pick and the very first thing he has to do with his signing bonus is write a check to pay off his student loans. It's just not right. It's not right. And you think about, you know, the revenue that he generated for Mississippi State. You think about Jake Mangum. The Jake obviously, uh, you know, maybe a little more financially secure than many others. Yeah, but how much money did we make off Jake Mangum? How much money did vendors that were making Jake Mangum shirts make off Jake Mangum and he didn't share in those profits? And so, yeah, it makes sense they get some NIL compensation for that. It makes perfect sense. You know, Jake Mangum goes out and does a card, you know, does the ads for Farm Bureau or, or whoever it is, a Jackson Zoo. Should be compensated for that. It only makes sense. But what it's morphed into is not what they promised us. And as I had somebody tell me before, it even got approved. I said, they're going to tie NL compensation and immediate eligibility together. Nobody even talks about the immediate eligibility because nobody really complains about that. But when you have the eligibility issue resolved and the NIL compensation package attacked to it, there is going to be more tampering. And I think the NCAA has got to hammer somebody for tampering. I mean, and I don't just mean a bull ban. If you really want to enforce the rules, you got to make an example out of somebody. And say, but Steve, tampering happens everywhere. Well, sure it does. Sure it does. 
But I can tell you that we've had some Mississippi State student athletes that have been contacted by people. Uh, and I, there's some of that I could probably prove and write articles about, maybe even books about, that would probably change your opinion of some people within the state of Mississippi that you think a lot of. It's true. And said, so, well, Steve, why don't you? Well, sometimes i got to decide which battles I want to fight. There's a lot of that going on. And not to mention, if nobody's enforcing those rules, what's the point going out writing some big expose? Well, then they'll react and overcorrect, right? And we get caught in collateral damage. It's part of the deal, too. And so that's got to change. We've got to have a uniform policy and a level playing field, and we've got to have enforcement. I am not against anybody profiting from their hard work and effort. I've got a problem, and I won't say the name, but uh, you know we had a player recently. I say recently. It go, goes back kind of the infancy of the NIL thing. Uh, we had – a couple deals in place with some players, and we had another guy that was leaving anyway, uh, goes back to the apartments and tells everybody that he was offered three times more than he actually was offered. And then all of a sudden, those guys that just signed those deals are like, hey, wait a minute, this isn't right. You're paying me X, and you were willing to pay him for X. That's not right. And so there's got to be a little more transparency with all this stuff, too. So we don't have those things happen, right? I'm not saying it's all got to be out there for public consumption, uh, but it's probably something that um, has got to be addressed in some form or another. It's a very complicated issue, and there's a lot of layers in this. That, you know, there, There's got to be law. There's got to be regulation. But I would encourage you not to worry about who we aren't and focus on who we are. And maybe who we are right now is not sufficient enough for us to be super excited about the rest of this year. And that's fair, right? But I know this, as as I've said twice this week, we're going to be there because of the fact that it's our jobs, but number two, too, because of our love for Mississippi State and our love for all of you. We are in this thing together. Brian Haydad and I have had this discussion before, like they used to do the whole Hell State family thing. We're family, okay? We are family. All of us that are lifers, all of us that uh, give each other cowbells for Christmas, regardless of uh, how the season goes, we're family. We are. But we have learned that administrators, even some of those that were educated at our fine institution, they may leave us too. There's some coaches that may pack up and leave us too, even if we want them to stay, but you and I are always here. And so I'm going to Texas for you. And I hope that you'll read for me. And I hope that you'll share for me. And I hope you'll continue to listen for me. And I'm going to keep writing books for you. And I'm going to do everything I can to push my staff to give you the best coverage that Mississippi State has ever had on a daily basis for you. Because there's a lot of other people that we can't count on. That's a sad reality of all of this. You know, you'd have a player come in, and maybe it's a player from your high school or a player from your neck of the woods or a player that you grew up watching play, and you were so excited that they chose Mississippi State. You're like, oh, I'm going to go out, I'm going to buy a jersey, right? I'm going to go out and give my kid a jersey, and then they're going to see us on the sidelines, and after ball games, they're going to come take pictures with us, and we'll go see them at fan day, and we'll get autographs and things like that, and I'm going to watch this kid for four to five years, and maybe I'll get a chance to watch him go to the National Football League, and I can say that I was there from the very beginning. Yeah, well, those opportunities are being robbed from you. It's just not the same. And it's not to say that um, there's not value in what we have. What What we're in now, this is not the end game. We're the final product. Things are going to continue to evolve, and I've got a lot of confidence in the leadership, you know, Greg Sankey being one of those people. He's you know, not a perfect guy, but he's been a great leader for the Southeastern Conference. Greg Sankey is well aware of what's happening in our league and around the country. And he's taking steps to try to fix it. Maybe the only guy that can. We've got to find a way to make this thing work, but the reality of it is this, is uh, those uniforms are going to be maroon and white on Saturday. 
And many of you, no matter the odds, no matter the fact that what state's a 38-and-a-half point uh, dog in this game, playing the number one team in the country in their own backyard in their very first SEC game, there are going to be many of you, by the time the game kicks off, you will have convinced yourself we have a chance. And I don't believe we do. But by the time the game kicks off, and I'll be in the, on press row at Darrell K. Royal Stadium for the first time in my career, and for a few minutes there, I'll probably feel the same. You know, maybe we get a big stop on third down thinking, hey, Michael Van Buren completes a pass down the field, we get a big play, and it's like, you know, what if? You know, the odds are against us for a reason, right? We're not playing good football, but we're playing football. And we only get a dozen of these a year, guaranteed. And so I'm going to lock arms with you, and I'm going to ask that you do the same with me. And we're going to stick together. That's not to say that we're not going to have disagreements, because we are. You know, Michael Van Buren goes out and maybe has a couple of slack series against Texas. People are going to want Chris Parson in. Maybe they get him. And then there'll be all these discussions about who should be the best, you know, the quarterback. And you're certainly entitled to that. I just kind of entrust our coaches to make those decisions. They, they see him in practice every day. But I do know when things aren't working, you got to make a change, you know. And I saw some things on Facebook this week that really kind of disappointed me, just so you know. Uh, I saw some people when Blake Shapin's injury came out. I saw some people that professed to be Mississippi State people say, well, well, now we can make a change. That's not the way we wanted to do it. And the truth of the matter is, if Blake Shapin wasn't the best quarterback on the roster and the one most capable of running the offense at a proficiency that Jeff Levy expects, he wouldn't be the starter. You or I haven't seen these guys every day in practice. I've seen them more than you, which I've only seen them about three days and practice. You haven't seen them at all. And so at some point, there's got to be a measure of trust in your coaching staff. And I can tell you from my interactions with Jeff Lebby, uh, Jeff Lebby is not thinking about the next job. Jeff Lebby is thinking about this job. You know, I had somebody on staff tell me a few days ago. He said, hey, we're going to get this thing fixed. We understand. You know, we can't come up here and just say, you know, hey, We'll figure it out in the offseason. We're trying to get it fixed now because we understand the landscape in college football. If we don't get it fixed and we don't get the players we need in the offseason to win next year, chances are we're not going to be here. So it's not like people are oblivious. They understand. And it's just like I think about, you know, the Blake Shapin thing. You know, he, um, he was so excited to be your quarterback. And you know what? Blake's in a situation now where, you know, we'll get that medical hardship waiver, we'll probably get it approved. Again, I thought it was probably 90% no prior to the injury, but now, you know, and it's like some people would say, hey, do we just say goodbye to him? No, we don't. But Blake Shapin has been like an extra coach all week in practice, trying to get Mike and Chris ready to go. He's breaking down film. He's looking at defenses. He's still very engaged with your guys. That's important to understand. Um, before we get out of here, reminds you, if you hadn't gone to DutyNobleBook.com and pre-ordered uh, The Dude, we're about two weeks away now from uh, the shipment arriving at the warehouse. And as we get closer, we'll, we'll share that with you. we got some things we're trying to pull together. But uh, the reality of it is it takes some time to get those things done. But you can order uh, at DutyNobleBook.com, DutyNobleBook.com, and also my sports titles are there too. And uh, When the Bottom Falls, of course, which is a personal memoir. But uh, I'm excited about that book coming out. I've, I've shared it many times on the show. And, and when it does get here, I'll probably, I may even read you an excerpt one day just to kind of get you excited about the book. Uh, I'm eager to hold it in my hands. And no, it's not the last book that I plan to write. As long as I have breath and I'm not too arthritic, I'm going to continue to write books uh, because I believe Mississippi State has been so woefully underrepresented in our our literary heritage here in the great state of Mississippi. I feel it's my calling in many respects, my responsibility to correct that as best I can. And uh, I had a fellow Mississippi writer tell me a little while back when he found that I was working on something else, he reached out and said, I can't believe you're already writing something else. And there's a part of me, it's like, yeah, I guess maybe that's true, but 
especially now that I'm an empty nester, you know, I, I don't have a lot of stuff to go hang out and go do, you know. I just, uh, I, I work for you guys. That's what I do. You know, then, then is running the spa and I'm running Gene's page and I'm doing the show and I'm writing books and, you know, and I'm happy. That's not, and I'm not ever going to sit here and, and try to um, let you, you know, suggest that uh, it's some, uh, you know, miserable experience. It's not. I love learning about Mississippi State and then being able to share that information with all of you. And there are some incredible stories in the dude that um, many hadn't been told in 100 years and some have never been told. And that excites me to know that you guys are going to learn something about a place that you love so much that uh, you, maybe you wouldn't have learned otherwise if I hadn't written this book. It's very humbling to me. Uh, I mentioned to you guys too, I'm going to hustle back and uh, do my best to get back to Starville so we can cover that soccer game against LSU <clears throat> and uh, planning to cover the rest of the home games uh, when we get it done. But um, there are a lot of student athletes out there that could benefit from your help. And uh, whether you have a business or whatever, there are there are some healthy ways to use NIL to help reward some of our student athletes. And uh, I would encourage you, if you have a business, that you pursue that uh, for your advertising needs. I mean, you know, we're, we're trading some social media stuff. Uh, it's a great thing for everybody involved. But uh, again, I'm about to go to bed, and uh, we'll write the Boneyard article up, and uh, I'll pack a bag and lay down, and we'll get some sleep, and then I'll head down to Baton Rouge and. Enjoy a nice lunch, and then uh, we'll head to go cover a ball game, and we'll be in Austin, Texas. It's been a while since I've been in Austin, Texas. I'm looking forward to going. You know, the, the, people say all the time, Steve, you know, you, you, it's old hat. You've been doing it so long, right? And in many respects, that's true. But any time we get a chance to go to a stadium we've never been to before, there's a novel approach to all of that. It's like, hey, this is pretty cool. I'm going to see the first time states played Texas in an SEC game. I wasn't around in 92, right? Um, you know, back in 92, I watched that game. Let me think where I was. I think uh, Dana and I were together then. Yeah, yeah, we were already together. We watched that game on 4th Street in Hattiesburg in our apartment. I always have to think about that. The 91 game, I wasn't with her yet, and I was still in the depths of addiction, and I watched that game um, – on Beauvoir Street in Columbia, Mississippi, at uh, my last residence before I left to go to, to Hattiesburg, and that which accelerated my uh, descent into chaos. Uh, but nevertheless, it's a historic day, and uh, we're going to be there to provide you full coverage. And, and so, again, even if you're not a subscriber, all of our game day coverage is free. Uh, come check it out uh, at jeanspage.com. Hey, let's get out of here. I could talk all night, but until next time, let's uh, all live our lives in a way we make more friends than enemies and people can see a difference in the way we live.